Hi, I'm Semin Yakov. This presentation is entitled Approximate an Exact Air Gap Effect in Ferrite Core Inductors. This is a joint work by myself and Evgeny. Our inductors are generally built around the gapped ferrite cores or powder cores, which we are not discussing here. And in the case of the gapped ferrite core, we see here the core itself, the ferrite material, and there is a gap here. And this is the winding. Here is the winding. This is the gap. And in this case, this is like an E core, and this is a U core. And let's define here some parameters. L sub B is the magnetic path length within the core. L sub G is the air gap length. A sub B is the cross-section area of the core. And L sub F is the difference between the total magnetic path length and the gap, the air gap. So why do we need an air gap? The ferrite material itself has a BH curve which looks something like that. Permeability is the derivative at any given point. I'm showing it at one point, but of course here it is much lower and this is why we don't want to get into the saturation area because then we are losing actually the permeability and the inductance is a function of the permeability. So we don't want to work here. So at low frequency, in which we are more concerned about getting into saturation rather than power loss due to the high frequency, in this case, we don't want to go into this area. Now, if we have a gap, and I'm showing here two gaps, one is a very small one, and the difference is not that much, but for the gap of 0.1 millimeter, we see that we are shaping the permeability. This is now this slope here is the permeability and consequently the magnetic flux density is much lower so we don't go into saturation. So in this case we can have a magnetic field up to this value with this magnetic flux density as compared to this H in which we'll have if we will not have the gap and then of course in order to avoid getting into saturation we'll have to maybe stop here. So, so the fact that we can have a much higher magnetic field means that we can have a much higher current and therefore we can have a much higher energy stored into the core. Now at high frequency we are more concerned about losses in the ferrite core which are a function of frequency and therefore we would like to limit the maximum magnetic flux density to a given value. I'm showing here like 0.2 Tesla. So if we will not have a gap, which is this line here, but we'll work with the BH curve as it is, then the amount of energy we can have is very small because the H is limited to this value. While if we have a gap, then we can go up to here while, of course, what we are losing here is the permeability. We're getting a much lower permeability. This, in turn, the lower permeability requires that we'll have this other parameters. This is now the equation for the inductance, which is the total permeability. This is the relative permeability, which we were talking about. And this is a vacuum or air permeability, cross-section area of the core, n square over Le. So if the permeability is low, then obviously to get a given inductance, we have to have, say, the cross-section area larger or a number of turn larger. But the overall gain is considerable. That is, we are getting a smaller inductor as compared to what we can get without the core. So with the limitation of the core, the fact that we have to reduce the permeability, we still are much better than just air core in which we have only this permeability. So this is a factor that could be in practical cases between say 20 and 200. So it makes the inductor smaller as compared to what we'll have if there be no ferrite core. Now I'm showing here now a derivation of the equivalent permeability. It starts with 
the relationship between the magnetic field and the current, and then we are breaking the core into sections, which is the ferrite section and the air gap section. I'm replacing here H by, well, we are talking about deviation, so it's a delta B over the mu, over the permeability, and then the delta B, as it turns out, drops out. So we have here the equivalent permeability. This is the permeability of the ferrite. And then, of course, the, and then we can express the equivalent permeability by this equation. If this term is much smaller than the length of the gap, that is, if the permeability of the ferrite is very large, so this term becomes much smaller than this, then it drops out and we get an approximate equation, uh, which is the magnetic path length over the air gap length, which is very simple and it is correct when you can approximate the equation with this approximation here, when this term is indeed uh, smaller than the gap length. So let's turn now to real cores. So I'm bringing here as an example E3216.9. This, these are actually related to the dimension here. So this is half of the core. We have two cores and then we might have the gap here. And here we have some basic data. This is a ferrox cube core. And we have what is relevant to us is the effective area, 83 millimeter square, and the magnetic path length, which is effective length, 74 millimeters. So these are the basic parameters of this core. These are the physical parameters. And then usually vendors, manufacturers, are giving us data about the permeability and the inductance coefficient, A sub L, which is the inductance, in this case, for one turn, okay? If you have more than one turn, then you have to multiplied by n square. So, for example, in this case, if the gap is, this is 1.6 millimeter, we have 100 nano Henry per turn, and then we have a permeability of 71, and as the gap becomes smaller and smaller, then the inductance coefficient becomes larger, and the permeability becomes larger, until we have zero gap, then this is basically very close to the permeability of the material itself. So this is this material. Other materials will have different, so the 369 has a permeability of about uh, 1700, while the 3692 has 1300, okay? So these are the differences. It will make a difference for the case of a small air gap, as we have just seen, when the air gap is large, LG is large, then uh, the difference doesn't matter much. Other companies like TDK are making cores of the same geometry. Actually, it is standard. Uh, they are standard for uh, core geometries. And of course, uh, these parameters will be the same, the er cross-section area of the core and, and the magnetic path length. And in this case, the data or information about the permeability or in fact the inductance factor A sub L is given in a different way. They are giving here two coefficient K1 and K2 for different material. These are the material for TDK N27 and N87 and here are the, these coefficient and these uh, coefficient are correct for air gap length, this S is air gap length, between 0.1 millimeter and 2.5 millimeter, and a inductance a coefficient, A sub L, 70 nanohenry to 700 nanohenry. Now, what are these coefficients? Well, you have to go to another document, and this is this document here, and then they are showing you the template of this approximation. This is an approximation fitting the data, measured data, to this equation. And what it says that the air gap length 
is equal to the required inductance coefficient a sub l and these are the constant okay so this s is the length of the air gap now since a sub l is equal to this equation with n equal to 1 this is the meaning of a sub l we can actually from here calculate the relationship between the equivalent permeability and the air gap length they are not giving it but you can derive it through from here through here into here so we can get this information too so these are two ways of providing the information about the effect of the air gap length on a sub l and actually on the equivalent permeability now both of these are based on actual measurements this is the same thing for tdk and of course uh, ferrous cube now if we compare now the data of ferrous cube and tdk one is given as a table the other one with the equation and we derive the permeability for the case of uh, TDK, we see that they are exactly the same, except for the very low air gap length. And this is because the initial permeability or the reversible permeability of the ferrite itself, as it is called, is different. So therefore, at small air gap, you would expect a difference, as we discussed earlier, so this explains this uh, small difference, but here, as the air gap becomes larger, they are exactly the same. Now, if we compare now the data sheet information to the calculated equivalent permeability per this full equation, this is the one that I have derived earlier, we see they are not the same. There is a difference between them, okay? The data sheet permeability is higher than the calculated one. Now if we use the approximate equation, then for the larger gaps here, it's about the same. This is because the approximation holds very well as we neglected this term. However, at low air gaps, we see a difference here, and therefore it is clear that uh, this equation, which is more correct, is the one to use uh, at small air gaps, okay, so you should, you should use it here. However, there is a difference between the full equation that we have derived and the data sheet. And the question is why? And the reason is the fringing effect calculation was based on the assumption that the flux density all co is concentrated within the gap, within the cross-section area, while in reality there is a fringing effect and some of the flux is spread out outside this cross-section area. So therefore the assumption of having all the magnetic flux density within this cross-section area is just incorrect and this is why the difference and what we see is that the actual inductance is larger. This is well known and in fact there is a analytical equation for it, a theoretical equation. This is taken from this website which is a very nice uh, magnetic website and here is the expression for the so-called fringing factor which means it is a factor of by how much is the actual inductance larger than the theoretical one considering of the fringing effect, and this is the effect of the fringing. While this is the gap length, this is the cross-section area, this is the length of the core window, and again, this is the gap. So this is an analytical expression. Now, interesting enough, using this uh, experimental template the TDK is using, we can actually calculate from here what is the permeability, equivalent permeability, and we see that the LG has a power term here, K2 plus 1, which for this core is like 0.252. So, in fact, this equation also shows that there is a correction that you have to apply in order to get the equivalent permeability, and this is based on experimental data. So now if I compare 
the permeability that I'm calculating from this uh, full equation and the actual permeability of the core from the data sheet, we see that there is a fringing factor indeed, and this fringing factor is uh, obviously larger than one, as we have said, the per permeability is larger, therefore the inductance is larger, and it depends on the geometry of the core, like uh, E core 22 uh, total length is uh, the worst, and this is the fringing factor, but how much is the permeability larger? And this is by how much the inductance will be larger. And this is the E32, and these are two uh, cores, this is the pot core and RM core, uh, which are sort of in between. However, not only that the data is different from this uh, full equation, in that the, there is a fringing effect which is not taken into account, as it turns out, the data is also different from the value that you'll get if you will use this theoretical fringing factor. So this line here is the theoretical value including the fringing factor, while this is the data sheet. In the E22, it's the worst case. As it turns out, for the larger core, there is some deviation here, but here it's pretty close. And also here, for the RM, for the larger air gap, it's getting close. But uh, again, for the P26, there is quite a bit of a difference. In percentage-wise, we see that for the E22, there is a big difference between the values this, that is including the fringing factor, and the error is here in percent, it's like 20-26%, while in the E-core, the large E-core, like 32, it starts with something like 7%, but it then becomes quite small. Now the conclusions here. We see that the fringing effect causes an error in calculated mu, even if you take into account the fringing factor. The actual measured permeability or inductance is, might be different and the error could be up to something like 30%, which is quite a bit. And we see that the fringing effect is highly dependent on core geometry, that is not just the gap length or the inductor length, but also on the geometry itself, what is the shape of the core. So this brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.